Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 8 on Dividing Fractions. Now we've done a lot so far in this unit on fractions. I mean, we're all the way up to Lesson 8. And yet, really, everything that we've done has been review. But we wanted to make sure at the sixth grade level that again you refresh some basic ideas about fractions, how to add them, how to multiply them, you know, the, how to convert between improper fractions and mixed numbers, and really just what fractions are, right? All of that is very, very important. But dividing fractions is a new skill in Math 6, and we're going to spend a couple lessons on it, and eventually we're going to have some kind of standard way that we divide every fraction pair, you know, out there. But in this first lesson on dividing fractions, we want to really get at the heart of how to think about dividing fractions. And then in the next lesson, we'll follow that up with a lot of just kind of mechanical practice. Anyway, let's get right into it by first reviewing the connections between division and multiplication. Let's justify some division using multiplication. Now, in exercise number one, we have the following. Justify each of the following division sentences using a multiplication sentence. So it's a little bit weird, but, but a sentence in math is kind of an equation that, that you just sort of state that's sort of a fact. Like 18 divided by 2 equals 9, right? That is a division sentence. Now, the reason that 18 divided by 2 is equal to 9 is because 2 times 9 is equal to 18. Now I really do want to emphasize that. You know, when we first think about division, we think about it completely in terms of sort of the inverse of multiplication, right? And you even have things like product pairs and stuff like that to kind of help you think about different division facts and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, right, when we think about 18 divided by 2 and the fact that it's equal to 9, we think about that in terms of, well, because 2 times 9 is 18, or because 9 times 2 is 18, right? So each one of these is the same in turn. 42 divided by 6 is 7, simply because 6 times 7 is 42. Every single division problem can be thought of in terms of multiplication, and it certainly can be checked in terms of multiplication. Now, letter A and letter B are, are probably automatic for you, so much so that when you see something like 18 divided by 2, you just know it's 9. You maybe don't think about the multiplication, you know, the, the inverse multiplication, 2 times 9 equals 18. Same thing with something like 42 divided by 6. On the other hand, something like letter C, 5 divided by 1 half is equal to 10. Well, again, we can justify that easily by saying because 1 half times 10 is equal to 5. And it certainly is, right? 1 half of 10 is certainly equal to 5. Maybe even stranger still, 1 fifth divided by 3 is 1 fifteenth. Well, again, simple enough, because 3 times 1 fifteenth, which would be 3 fifteenths, which would then simplify down to 1 fifth right? We can, we can reason out basically the answer to any division problem by thinking about what we would have to multiply the divisor by in order to get what's being divided. All right? Let's keep playing around with this now and look at how we might be able to divide two fractions. All right. Now, key to this, right, is remembering what we saw in the last lesson with multiplying two fractions, right? When we multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators, the tops, and we multiply the denominators, the bottom. So let's take a look at exercise number two. For each of the following fraction division problems, find the quotients by filling in the missing part of the multiplication sentence. All right, so let's talk about what I'm really getting at here in letter A. In letter A, we have 6 35ths divided by 3 fifths. Now, whatever that is, whatever answer is sitting in this blank, whatever the quotient is, it's the number that we have to multiply by 3 fifths in order to get 6 35ths. So when I come over here and I think, okay, 3 fifths times what equals 6 35ths? Well, 
3 times 2 would be equal to 6, right? And 5 times 7 would be equal to 35. And therefore, 6 35ths divided by 3 fifths must be 2 sevenths. It has to be, because 3 fifths times 2 sevenths is 6 35ths. Let's do another one like these together. That, that, that wasn't so hard. It wasn't so hard to figure out what the, what the quotient of those two fractions was. Right in letter B, we have 40 fifth, 45 sixteenths divided by 5 eighths. And again, whatever that's equal to must be what we need to multiply 5 eighths by to get 45 sixteenths. So, you know, we come over here and we say, all right, well, 5 times ah, 9 would be 45, right? And 8 times 2 would be 16. So 45 sixteenths divided by 5 eighths must be 9 halves. It's got to be. Now, by the way, if you're seeing a pattern where it's like, well, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 35 divided by 5 is 7, oh, awesome, right? Same thing here. What I'd like you to do now is take a moment to figure out letter C and letter D. Pause the video now. All right, here I want to do 55 21st divided by 11 thirds. Simple enough, what do I have to multiply 11 thirds by to get 55 21st? Well, 11 times 5 is going to be 55, and 3 times 7 is going to be 21. So since I must have a 5 in here and a 7 in here, let me move the board up a bit, then this has to be 5 7 right? Likewise, in letter D, right, I'm dividing 35 36 by 7 thirds. So now I'm asking to myself, all right, what do I have to multiply 7 thirds by to get 35 36? 7 times 5 is going to be 35. 3 times 12 is going to be 36. So since that has to be 5 twelfths, so does that. And I never want you to forget this, right? If you know how to multiply two fractions together, then oftentimes you can figure out the quotient of two fractions by thinking about it in that way. All right? Let's see how much this makes sense to you in the next problem. All right? Exercise number three. The quotient 28 fifteenths divided by 2 fifths is closest to which whole number? Justify your answer. All right. So, you know, all products, quotients, sums, differences of fractions, you know, result in some kind of a fraction. Right now, that fraction could be a whole number. Um, but if it's not a whole number, then it's got to be closest to one whole number or another. What I'd like you to do is now use what we did in the last problem to figure out what this division problem is equal to and then which whole number it's closest to. Pause the video now and see if you can work this out. All right, well, let's play around with it. Right, I'm trying to figure out what 28 fifteenths divided by 2 fifths is, right? And ultimately speaking, whatever that's equal to is going to be the fraction I have to multiply 2 fifths by in order to get 28 fifteenths. Well, I would have to do 2 times 14 to get 28. I'd have to do 5 times 7, oh, not 5 times 7, how about, how about 5 times 3 to get 15, and therefore 28 fifteenths divided by 2 fifths is going to be 14 thirds. Now, that's what the quotient is equal to, but I'm looking for the whole number that's closest to this. So I do 14 divided by 3, and I get 4, that will be 12, that will leave me with a remainder of 2. So I get 4 and 2 thirds, and that is closest to 5. By the way, right, how do I know 4 and 2 thirds is closest to 5 and not 4? Well, it's all about that fraction 2 thirds. 2 thirds is larger than 1 half, and because it's larger than 1 half, 4 and 2 thirds is closer to 5 than it is to 4. If this had been 4 and 1 third, well, 1 third is less than 1 half, so that would have been closer to 4. All right? Now, 
in the next set of exercises, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very peculiar case. And that is what happens when we divide two fractions that have the same denominators. Let's take a look at that in the next exercise. All right, dividing fractions with common denominators. I thought that was only for adding and subtracting fractions. Well, there's a very special thing that happens when you divide two fractions that have the same denominator. And let's look at it in exercise number four. For each of the following division problems, determine the quotient by filling in the missing portion of the multiplication sentence. So just what we did in the last couple exercises. In C and D, think about cross canceling. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to do A and C together and then have you do B and D on your own because C and D are they're kind of challenging, especially because we do have to think about cross canceling. But first, let's look at letter A where we have 8 thirds divided by 4 thirds. And again, just like we thought about it before, that means I want to figure out what I need to multiply 4 thirds by in order to get 8 thirds. Well, I'd have to multiply 4 by the number 2, and I'd have to multiply 3 by the number 1. And therefore, 8, four, eight thirds divided by 4 thirds is 2 firsts, but we shouldn't leave it that way. We should just leave it as 2. Right? Never leave something like 2 over 1 or 5 over 1, right? 2 over 1 is the same as the number 2. Now let's take a look at letter C, because again, this is a little bit trickier. 7 fourths divided by 3 fourths, right? Well, that's 3 fourths times what equals 7 fourths, and that's tricky, right? Because even though 4 times 1 is 4, and that's simple, right, 3 times eh is, is 7, right? So now I kind of want to think about canceling. Right, so what would I have to have in here? So the three would cancel, right? The four wouldn't, and I'd be left with a seven. Well, if you think about it a little bit, right? That would have to be, let me bring this up a bit, it would have to be seven thirds. And think about cross canceling when you multiply two fractions, right? The three and the three would cancel. I would be left with a one here and a one here, and then one times seven would be seven, and one times four would be four. So I'd have to have 7 thirds in order to have that. So that means this is equal to 7 thirds. Okay. What I'd like you to do is play around with letter B and letter D to see if you can figure out what we're going to get here and here. All right. Well, B again is a pretty simple one because saying, well, what do we have to multiply 2 sevenths by to get 10 sevenths? That's easy. 2 times 5 is going to be 10, and 7 times 1 is going to be 7. So that's just going to be 5 firsts, which is just equal to 5. Letter D is going to play out very similar to letter C. 2 fifths divided by 11 fifths. Well, I have to think about this, and again, 11 times what equals 2? That's a little bit a little bit questionable. I want that 11 to go away. It's not anywhere in my answer, so I'm going to have to have an 11 down here, right, in order to cancel those. And then what I'll have to have up here is a 2. So ultimately, my answer will be 2 11s. Right? Now, let's talk about each one of these because here's the important observation, the critically important observation. When you divide two fractions that have the same denominator, then the result you get is always simply the numerator of the first fraction divided by the numerator of the second fraction. So 8 thirds divided by 4 thirds is simply 8 divided by 4, which is equal to 2. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, if I had 8 oranges and I divided by 4 oranges, I'd just get 2, right? right? 8 thirds divided by 4 thirds just gives me 2. Same thing here, 10 sevenths divided by 2 sevenths is the same as 10 divided by 2, right? And that gives me 5. It gets more complicated down in letter C and letter D, but the pattern still holds, right? 7 fourths divided by 3 fourths would be equal to 7 divided by 3, but that's the same as the fraction 7 thirds. Remember, division and fractions, right, have an equivalence to each other. And same thing here, 2 fifths divided by 11 fifths is just going to be 2 divided by 11, which is 2 elevenths. 
So the moral of the story is great, which is that if we're dividing two fractions that have the same denominators, the result is simply the numerator of the first fraction divided by the numerator of the second fraction. It's really kind of cool. So that being said, let's take a look at some of these problems. Exercise number five. Find each of the following quotients. If the answers are whole numbers, leave them that way. If the answers are fractions, write them in simplest form. All right, it's really this simple. And again, this works if the fractions have the same denominator, right? That's all we're saying. So 12 fifths divided by 2 fifths, this is going to be the same as 12 divided by 2. And 12 divided by 2 is nice. It's just 6. So 12 fifths divided by 2 fifths is equal to 6. What I'd like you to do is work through letters B, C, and D. Some of the cases you're going to get nice whole numbers. Other cases you're going to get fractions. All right? So work through each one of these, and then we'll take a look. All right, let's go through them. All right, letter B, 18 sevenths divided by 2 sevenths is going to be equal to 18 divided by 2. That's a nice whole number, or 9. 3 fifths divided by 2 fifths, that's going to be 3 divided by 2. And that is just the fraction 3 halves. 4 ninths divided by 8 ninths is going to be the same as 4 divided by 8 which is the same as the fraction 4 eighths, but that actually can be reduced down to 1 half. All right, that's it, right? If we've got two fractions that have the same denominator, we can find their quotient, we can find out how to divide them by simply dividing their numerators. Let's play around with this in another exercise. Here we go, exercise number six. Consider the division problem 5 6 divided by 2 thirds. Oh, wait a second. How am I going to do this problem, right? Let's back out for a second, you know. How am I going to do this, right? I, I, I know how to do it if, uh, if they've got the same denominators, but these fractions don't. You know, I've got 5 6 divided by 2 thirds. Well, in letter A, it says rewrite the division problem so that both fractions have a common denominator and then find the quotient. Right, so at the end of the day, right, since we know how to divide two fractions that have the same denominator, and we know how to take any two fractions at all and get a common denominator, then we can actually divide any two fractions. Right, so here we go. We want to get the two fractions to have a common denominator. Right, so our first fraction is 5 sixths, right, and our second fraction is 2 thirds, right? So they both can have a denominator. They can both have a denominator of 6 if we simply multiply that second fraction, both the numerator and the denominator, by 2. So in other words, we can now take our problem and change it from 5 6 divided by 2 thirds into 5 6 divided by Four sixths. All right. And as soon as we have the answer five sixths divided by four sixths, and they have the same denominator, then I know that their quotient must just be five divided by four, which as a fraction is five fourths. Okay. So what this exercise does is it seeks to illustrate how we now divide two fractions that have different denominators. Well, we simply get their denominators to be the same and then divide their numerator. Now letter B asks us to check our answer to letter A by using multiplication. All right, well, given what we did in exercise one, two, and three, this should be pretty easy. Why don't you go ahead and do it? All right, well, again, if 5 fourths is correct, if 5 fourths is correct, then 2 thirds times 5 fourths should be 5 sixths. Let's give it a shot, right? 2 thirds times 5 fourths. All right, we could do a little cross canceling if we want to. Into 2 goes into 2 one time, 2 goes into 4 two times, 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 2 is 6, and that checks. All right, 
Simple enough. Let's wrap this lesson up. All right, in today's lesson, we primarily looked at dividing fractions sort of through the lens of using multiplication to help us think about it, right? And we found that there were lots of division problems where you could simply work it out. You could say, well, this fraction divided by this fraction must be equal to the following because when I multiply these two together, I get this. And that's a great way to do division by fractions. If there's ever a division by fractions problem that lends itself well to that thinking, you should go for it. We use that then to figure out if two fractions have the same denominator, the same number on the bottom, then we can divide them by simply dividing their numerators. Sometimes that division turns out nice in a whole number, right? And sometimes that division then isn't so nice and we just have to express it as a fraction again. Fair enough. In the next lesson, we're going to see a very standard method for dividing two fractions. But that method comes from what we've seen in this lesson. And you never really want to just say, here's the way you do something, end of story, right? You want to make sure that you understand why it works the way it does. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.